Hey everybody, it's Andy and we're back in the Maker Lab at Micro Center and today we're talking about mechanical keyboards and 3D printing. Well, we're gonna go ahead and build this keyboard right here, the MK Pro V2 with these keycaps. But in order to do that, we need to go back in time. All right, so first thing to know is when you get this bare bones kit, it won't be dissected like this. It'll be pretty much all together. All you'll have to do is install the switches and the caps. But we've gone ahead and dissected it just so we could give you an idea of what's inside of this mechanical keyboard. First, we'll look at the base. So the base is an injection molded plastic base, and you can see that it's got a 4,000 milliamp hour battery attached to it. That's because this specific keyboard is not only Bluetooth, but can also do RFID, and it's a traditional USB-C connection as well. Large rubber gasket, this thick rubber gasket. And one of the things in a mechanical keyboard building is all about sound. How does the actual keyboard sound when you press a key? Everybody's looking for that thock, and that's kind of the sound that it makes when you hit the key. How balanced is that sound? Does it have a good bass to the sound, a good mid sound? It's not too tinny, it doesn't sound hollow. So things like this rubber gasket help with the thock. And then we have the heart of the system, which is this PCB or printed circuit board. And on this printed circuit board, we have a few components already, including the rotary knob, which again, like on the Adafruit one, has a click and also has the turn. And then you can also see these risers here for the keys that are a little bit larger than just a single keycap. If we turn around to the back, what you're gonna notice is that all of these switch contactors here are already pre-soldered. The header for the battery is also pre-soldered. And then all of these little white squares are the RGB LEDs that are individually addressable underneath each one of the keys. Beyond that, the really important thing to call out here is that this chip up here, despite me not knowing which exact chip it is because it's blank, is a microcontroller of sorts, right? I've seen boards like this that use the Pico or that use an STM32 style chip uh, to control it. If you're familiar with programming things like Arduinos or using CircuitPython or MicroPython, the world of microcontrollers has made its way into mechanical keyboards. That's another thing that makes these keyboards so great is that they're so programmable down to the code level. You don't have to know how to code in order to use one of these. There's utilities like QMK and VIA, which we'll look at in just a little bit, to be actually able to program this chip and thus your keyboard. The next piece we've got on top of that is another foam gasket. And this foam gasket, again, helps with the thock and making sure the sound doesn't sound too thin and has a good feel. Then we have a metal plate that goes over top of that just to add rigidity. And finally, we have the top plate here. This top plate will go over top and screw down. Now on this one specifically, it's got some little windows for the RGB LEDs to come out. So we've got a final version of the keyboard assembled here before we put together this one. However, our color scheme for the 3D printed keycaps is gonna be a little bit different. Let's go ahead and put all these pieces together and start installing some switches and keycaps. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is take that rubber gasket and place it inside of here. We need to make sure to run the battery cable up through this hole here. Once we've done that, it's just gonna be a matter of reseating what we unsat. Make sure that everything's down as far as it needs to go. It's neat, this rubber gasket actually also has the rubber feet, so make sure you push those rubber feet all the way through. Once they're through with a satisfying click, uh, you can turn it back over. Double check how it's seated and you should be good. We need to reattach the battery to the connector down here. All right, now that we've got it connected, we're gonna go ahead and flip the board right back over. What you wanna be very, very careful of now is because you've taken this out, there are these little switches here that need to be in the right orientation. What I su would suggest is switching it all the way down and down and switching these all the way to the left and to the left so that when you go to put it in, ooh, rainbow, you can line up the switches and the outward switches as well. And we're in. All right, so next we are going to put this foam interface on here and then followed by powder coated painted plate. Once we do that, we're now at the point where we are ready to install the screws back in. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right, so we have put all of those screws that hold the plates together back on. We still have some wonderful RGBs. I see a green light blinking. I'm guessing that's probably Bluetooth looking for a partner, but let's go ahead and put on the final piece. We'll have to go ahead and turn it over now. 
and use our friend Alan and his wrenches. Okay, and for the final touch, we're gonna put the rotary knob back on the rotary encoder. Press it sometimes for fun to get the LEDs lit up. Now we are ready to install these glorious, glorious Fox red linear switches uh, into this bare bones kit. Again, when you buy the bare bones kit, it will come like this. You won't have to assemble it like we did. We just thought it was fun to take it apart and see what was inside. So let's go ahead and do that. On the switch itself, you can see the red stem. You can see that the body is clear and that helps the RGB LEDs shine through. And then you can see as a switch would have two conductors, it has two conductors. You just line these two holes up and press it in. There's a, a center registration stem as well. So let's go ahead and just get started. You wanna be careful as you're doing this uh, that you don't force it down if it doesn't wanna go because you may actually be bending the pins. So double check your orientation. We are all completed and the switches are all in. Let's go ahead and start inserting some keycaps. All right, now that we've got it back together, a big shout out to our designer, Studley Avocado, who was the one that actually designed this. Now, when I downloaded the source files, I wanna show you how they were oriented to print. The designer had them oriented so that they printed here. And his keys actually came out really nice. For some reason, when I downloaded them and I looked at them, I decided that I wanted to print them like this. And that's okay for the keys that have a flat top. But for the keys that actually have a slope to them, the layer lines become very visible, just like on the space bar right down here. Following Studley Avocado's directions and printing them in the orientation that they come on the file. You'll get a nicer result. The only thing that I did notice is that his keycaps are a bit loose on these key switches. So pro tip is make sure to only print one cap for a test. If you need to size up by let's say 0.5 millimeters or down by 0.5 millimeters to get a real nice tight fit like these, then do that. Because this is something you're gonna look at every day for detail, you may wanna go down to a lower layer height, maybe 0.2 or lower. I, because I was cramped for time, went with 0.28 draft uh, and I think they still look good. If I had to do it again, I would absolutely rotate the orientation and take it down to at least a 0.2 millimeter layer height. Now that we've put it together and talked about how to orient the parts for 3D printing, let's go ahead and look at the software that works with this keyboard. Now, if you're familiar with microcontrollers or small programmable chips, such as the Atmel chip on this Adafruit Cutie Pie, um, you're gonna like that programming these keyboards, which also have a small microcontroller chip, don't necessarily need all the lines of code that you're used to because they've created a great graphical user interface or GUI for you to make the modifications you need to make this keyboard do exactly what you want it to do. So let's go ahead and jump in and take a look. All right, so on your favorite browser, go ahead and go to the address bar and type in via.evove.top. We're gonna go to this page. You're gonna see this integrated circuit, I assume, and we are gonna go over to the gear because right now we don't have a definition for this keyboard set up in this online software. We are gonna make sure that the design tab is shown. If it's not, you need to click it on and you will see the little design tab or the little paintbrush. On the paintbrush, we can go ahead and upload the definition that we found on Micro Center's website down under the warranty and support. Let's go ahead and click that. And we're gonna choose the file that we downloaded. Click OK or open. And now you can see a layout of the keyboard. But this is just showing you a layout. What we really wanna see is under configure. If we authorize the device now and click on it, this little guy should load that up for us. And now we can see all of the different features that we can modify the keys to do. So let's first take a look at the layout. There's a couple of things that I want to change uh, or I want to do different. Um, and the first one is I wanna make this delete key up here, actually the print screen key. Click on the delete key, make sure it's kind of blinking. Find the print screen key. Now I wanted this here because uh, I often 
utilize the print screen uh, for taking screenshots, for doing tutorials, so it's handy for me to have that here. Now, on this keyboard, I actually changed uh, the home key, I believe it was, to the calculator key, uh, because I like to access the calculator quickly, and this will allow me to do that. I don't use the caps lock function that much, so I'm gonna change this out for a more useful key. I'm gonna go under the media key set, and I'm going to choose the play button. So now my caps lock button will actually start and stop the music, like from Spotify or Apple Music or what have you. So now that I've made these modifications, I wanna save the file and then re-upload it to the board. So first we need to save the current layout. So I'm just gonna call this one Andy's MK Pro V2 and hit save. All right, so we've saved it to our desktop, but we actually have to re-upload it into the keyboard now. This is the part where we're actually taking the firmware we created and putting it on the chip inside so that the keyboard does what we want it to do. Once you take this keyboard away from this computer, it will maintain that programming, so any computer you go to and plug this keyboard into, it will function the way that you programmed it. So it doesn't rely on an application that is computer side, it's actually programmed into the board. So let's go ahead and load that saved layout. Um, and if you're eagle-eyed here, you can see that I didn't remember to keep the .json file extension on there when I saved it, so I had to go over here to all files to find it. So in case you do that, that's where your file is. Successfully updated layout. Oh, wonderful. All right, so I hope you've enjoyed this process of building the MK Pro V2. This is an awesome, heavyweight mechanical keyboard that you're gonna enjoy typing on every day. These 3D printed keycaps really give it the ultimate customization. Could you take it further? Sure. You could use multicolor. You could do different materials. You could maybe have some TPU buttons that are a little bit more squishy. It's up to you. It's your keyboard. So we really want you to get out to your local micro center, pick up a 3D printer, pick up some filament, and also pick up an MK Pro V2 keyboard and make your own. If you do end up doing that, make sure to send us some photos on our community page of what you built and what your design looks like. And we'll see you next time in the Maker Lab at Micro Center.